before we start simplifying. Are you following me on this so far? Again, you know what? It's probably useful to ch check this with a derivative at some point. If you took a derivative here, notice you're going to get 2x to the fifth. That's nice. You can check that. <coughs> Make sure you have these right. Minus. Let's see the next piece. How about 3x squared? What's the integral of 3x squared? Okay, I like the way you said 3x to the third over 3, because I'm going to simplify it in a moment. I'm going to write out the integrals just like they are, and then I'll simplify it just, just a bit. We okay so far? <coughs> plus, plus what? Very good. You sound like my little drone today. 4x squared over 2. That's good. No emotion, but at least you're right. It's fantastic. And then the minus 8 goes to 0, right? Because all constants go to... Oh, wait. <laughs> when do constants go to 0? We're not doing derivatives. We're going backwards with that. So if a constant goes to 0 in a derivative, a constant goes with an x in an integral. So this goes minus 8 x. And that's it, right? Nope. Over 1. Uh, uh, over 1, I guess you could if you really wanted to. We don't need to show the over 1. But we are missing something very crucial. Plus C. Yeah, plus C is important. Again, what we're finding is a family of curves. A f or, I'm sorry, a, f a family of area curves, basically, from this. This is a, a family of all the curves such that when I get, take a derivative of it, it will give me that. That's what we're talking about. You, are you with me? By the way, if you take a derivative of this, will it give you that? Mm -hmm. Certainly. That's how we found this in the first place. That's why it's called the antiderivative. Now we're going to simplify a little bit. Some of you already told me this is uh, one third x to the sixth or x to the sixth over three. Minus x cubed plus two x squared minus eight x plus c. That's our, that is our integral. By show of hands, how many feel okay with this example? Kind of a basic example, right? Not, not too bad. I am going to show you some ones that you do have to do some work to. This one was nice because everything fit in our integration table right away. There are going to be some cases where that is not true. So we'll take, would you like to see a couple of those examples? Okay. <clears throat> I think I gave you one last time that I, I'm not going to give you again, but I want to talk about it. Like that. We're not going to go all the way through this, but I want you to, to look at it. I, I gave you an example similar to that before. Can I just take an integral of this and an integral of this and multiply it together? Does that work? No. no, it only works separation by addition subtraction. So if I gave you this problem, what's the only way you have to do it right now? Distribute. 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 Make it look like this, and then you can do it. Does that make sense? You get like x to the fourth minus uh, 5x squared plus 6. At least I hope so. <coughs> I guess we can't go all the way through. It's not that hard. But once you do, do you see the distribution there? Once you distribute, then you can take an integral. It's it's fairly easy after that. Okay on that one? So even if it doesn't look exactly like this, sometimes you can make it look like that by some distribution or some working with our fractions uh, or manipulating some trig functions. We'll see that on the next ones. Are there any questions on, on this particular one? You guys alive today out there? Yes, <laughs> okay. You're freaking me out. Do you remember me telling you that with your integrals, they absolutely must be exactly like on an integration table, or otherwise you cannot do it? That was not a lie. Okay, that's a true statement. So when I give you something like this, is that right there on your integration table? Then you can't do it the way it is. That means you have to manipulate it somehow. So when we look at this, what we're constantly trying to do 
is somehow figure a way to make this fit something on our integration table. That's the idea. These fit because they're polynomials. They're very easy to do. With trig functions, they got to match exactly. Well, you can't even be missing a little piece. We got to make them match up. So when you're dealing with things like this, it's often nice to break them up and see if you can manipulate around those trigonometric identities that you know and love. No, maybe not love, but at least hopefully know. So for instance, let me, let me give you a, a, a method on how to do some of these. One method would be, okay, let's say I split this up as 1 over sine x. times cosine x over sine x. Are we okay on that one? Do you see it's legal to do? That's still cosine x over sine squared x, right? Now, why am I doing this? Well, firstly, because I'm pretty good at it. right? I know what this is going to be. But secondly, because I'm trying to get some other identity, because I know right now cosine x over sine squared x, that over, do you see the over? There's nowhere to be found in your integration table, is there? There's no over. There's no fraction on your integration table anywhere. Right? But what there is, is when you have something over sine and something over sine, you can oftentimes translate those into some other trig identities that might be on your integration table. So if you see an over, that's not a good thing for you right now. Okay, if you see an over right now, and later on I'll show you some other ways to, to go about doing this. Method one is, well, manipulate it into something you can work with. If you have something over sine, over sine, translate that back into a different trig function and then see what you have. What is one over sine? That's cosecant times, not tan, I'm pretty sure I gave you a nice one. If you haven't memorized that, that uh, integration table, which I'm guessing you probably haven't in one day, uh, why don't you take out your notes and look at it. Find the integral of cosecant cotangent, cosecant x cotangent x. I want you all to find it, Get it in your, at least read it on your own. Find it. Mm -hmm. Reading something like that reinforces the idea even more besides just hearing it from somebody. So I want you to find it, look at it, and identify that they're right. I wrote them on the board. They're on the video. And they're also in your book. Did you all find it? Okay, so cosecant cotangent, I gave you a nice one because that's actually in there. If it wasn't, you wouldn't be able to do it. It has to be there. It has to. So that means you're going to manipulate these around until you find something that's exactly in your table, which I guess is kind of a nice thing, isn't it? That if it's not there, you can't do it. And sometimes making it <coughs> there is, is fairly part of those. So <clears throat> this one, you said negative cosecant? X. Yes? Plus Plus Very good. Feel okay with that one? Let's take a look at one more that I want you to see. It's kind of nasty, but firstly, before you go any further, can you tell me something that is wrong with that integral right now? It's with respect to x but the variables t. Say that louder for me. It's with respect to x but the variables t. Do you see the discrepancy? If I'm asking you to take an integral with respect to t, I'm sorry, with respect to x, my, my variables have to be x. If my variables are t, that needs to be a t. If it's not, then you can't do it the way this is. Right? You have to have that in the same variable. So that's correct, that's fine. Don't forget your DT, that's, that's important. Now, oh, OMG, is that in my integration table? No. Heavens no. No, it, it, we don't have anything over anything in our integration table, so this can't possibly be. Now, one more question. Can I take the integral of this, the integral of this, and the integral of that? Does that work? No. Is there a quotient rule for integration? No. Now, make it fit. Make it fit in your integration table. So manipulate this somehow. Someone on the right-hand side of the room, give me an idea about how I can manipulate this to make it look maybe better. Say what? T to the negative 
okay, I can't quite just move that up there whenever I want to because it's being subtracted, but you're on the right track. I like the, the thought. Can you factor stuff out? Factor stuff? What do you mean factor stuff out? Okay. Wait, say that again? Break it apart. When you, when you deal with things sometimes, it's often nice, occasionally, to be able to do this to it. Right? Which is a true statement. Notice that if I do that, and this is a very big hint, whenever you have one term on the denominator, that's possible, right? Two terms, not possible. But one term, you can always do that. Do you see what I'm talking about? If you break up each individual numerator term over the denominator factor, you get all these different fractions, each of which will be simplifiable. Each of one. So yeah, absolutely correct. Let's make this, and I'll show you every step here. Let's make this t squared over t to the fourth minus 2t to the fourth over t to the fourth. And there's still a dt. By the way, don't oh, try not to overthink these things. Do the simplest thing that will work. Not the hardest thing. Do the simplest thing that will work. That's the simplest thing that's going to work. Why is that the simplest thing that's going to work? I don't know. You tell me. Can you simplify each of those fractions? Absolutely. And they're not going to have any denominators in here. So when I have t squared over t to the fourth, well, I know that we subtract exponents when I divide like, like bases. So that's going to give you t squared or t to the negative 2? Negative 2. Minus, how about the last one? What was it? Oh, that's great. I love that. Does this look a whole lot better than that one? Yeah, for sure. Because this fits our table, and that's what we needed it to do. So let's do the integral of two, or sorry, t to the negative 2 minus 2. Do it on your own. See what you get out of that, okay? I'm putting a dot, dot, dot because I'm going to add more to that question after we solve the first part. Uh, before we get there, let's look at, at this part. Uh, we're going to do the integral of t to the negative 2 minus 2. Well, hopefully you got t to the, is it negative 3 or negative 1? Negative You're adding 1 to it. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 over negative 1. Did you make it that far? Mm -hmm. Minus what? 2t. 2t. Two 2t. Two two cool. Maybe plus c at the end. Now you can hold off to the plus c until the very last step if you want to, as long as you have the plus c. We found out that plus c, that's a constant. It really doesn't matter where you have it, as long as you have it at the end. It's just a constant. Now I will make this a little prettier. I'm going to move that exponent to the denominator. That will be negative 1 over t minus 2t plus c. Variables we should at the end of the Yeah. Typically, yes. Are there cases where you don't? Yeah, there are, but typically, 